Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Hashtag Leadership, What's On Your Mind. Remember a podcast to make you stop and think about your leadership journey by adding value and adding people that have got amazing stories and inspirational journeys as well as experts in their field. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit um, subscribe on the YouTube channel or follow us on your podcast provider. So today we are joined by Ron. How are you, sir? Hi, Stuart. How are you? Nice to meet you. Yeah, good. Thank you so much for joining us today. I know already, I'm excited about this. I don't know a lot about you and your, your journey, obviously. I know you've authored nine books. And as soon as it came into my inbox that you want us to come on the podcast, I always look at credibility and you're oozing credibility. So um, thank you so much for joining us and bringing your credibility to the audience that we have. So without further ado, as I hit the 20-minute timer, could you introduce yourself to the audience and let us know who you are and what you do? Yeah. So um, I am the co-founder and managing partner of a consulting firm called Nabilent. We're now 17 years old, um, and we spend our days uh, accompanying executives and leaders of large companies and sometimes mid company, mid-sized companies on really disruptive and messy journeys of transformation, whether they've gotten themselves into a ditch uh, of some kind they have to get out, or there's an opportunity on the horizon they're trying to pursue. Our job is to construct the journey of their own personal transformation, their organizational transformation, their team transformation, uh, in a way that actually gets them where they want to go. And that can include lots of different things. It can include executive coaching. It can include organization design. It can, it can include uh, team development and formation. But our job is to make sure that as their Sherpa, if you will, they arrive at the destination they set out to or get out of the place that they didn't want to be in in the first place. Amazing. Yeah, I know you're going to bring, I'm going to ask you so many things about what you've seen and experienced in that time so and um, before we get started though obviously we're hashtag leadership what's on your mind being very focused on you to start off with what comes to your mind when you hear the word leadership well these days um because i've spent so much time in this last writing project on t- to be honest um trustworthiness is really a interesting concept i've spent a lot of time thinking about and talking about because it seems to be in such rare uh availability these days. I think, you know, the article here in the United States in the Atlantic last week just talked about that we're in a trust recession. Mm -hmm. Um, I think these last two years, um, while I think people want to blame the pandemic for a lot of things, I think the pandemic just revealed a lot of things. I don't know that it caused it. And I think the places where we have struggled to to trust other leaders or we have withdrawn trust from people um, uh, are, are plentiful. And so the question I'm always wanting to think, think of with, le- with leaders is on what basis do you believe you're trustworthy? Mm-hmm. On what, uh, what basis do you assume the stakeholders that are most important to you have chosen to trust who you are, what you do, what, how you decide, um, whether you have their best interest at heart or not? Um, we, you know, our, our research for the book was a 15-year longitudinal study of more than 3,200 leaders that we interviewed. So it's quite a reach. And it turns out, Stuart, that not lying is no longer the basis on which people trust you. It takes a lot more uh, to earn and keep the trust of others than just not being a sociopath. Mm. Yeah. And also, just as you mentioned that, it came to, it's almost like consistency piece, isn't it? Like that short term win that people are always after and not faking it and that that consistency of trust over time must be a massive thing for people trying to achieve. Do you, is that something that's correct? It's, it's really true, Stuart. People have to be able to predict how you're going to respond in certain situations. You don't have to be a robot. You don't have to be an auto, autotron human being. You have to be authentic. You have to be really who you are, and you have to be flawed. I mean, you have to, you have to be able to demonstrate that you know you're flawed uh, before the people you lead have to point it out to you. But... but if, if you are two different people in two different situations, um, you confuse people. And, and it, it not only erodes your trust, but people will learn to manipulate you. People will learn to say, okay, well, I know how to game him or her because I know how to work them in a certain way to get a certain outcome out of them. So showing up as in a consistent way over time and letting people be able to predict that is a critical foundation to establishing and keeping trustworthiness. You know this well, you, it, it can take years. To establish that degree of trust but you can ruin it in minutes yeah 
Um, and you can get it back. It's not, I don't think it's always permanent, but redemption doesn't, redemption comes at a cost. Yeah. Amazing. Awesome. So talking about journeys and over time and um, your leadership journey. So where do you think your leadership journey started? So was it on reflection? Now you're here and now on the podcast <laughs> or was there a light bulb moment at the time where you thought, right, this is where I have to start my leadership journey. How well, far I think, back are you going? Uh, you know, there's two versions of that story. One is my leadership of others. Um, and one is my thought leadership. Um, and my leadership of ideas. Um, and I think those are, they're, they're related, but they're different. I think I've been leading people much longer than I've been leading ideas. But I think the thought leadership, I'll, so I'll talk about the one about ideas. Um, and I think that started a long time ago. I, I've always wanted to, I've always loved codifying ideas. I've always loved concepts and how they shape behavior. I've always been fascinated by those things. Um, I didn't understand my responsibility as a thought leader when I wrote my first book 20 something years ago. I just thought my job is to do, a, you know, to gather a, a thorough body of evidence and put it out there. And that was it. That I had no stewardship responsibilities for the ideas or cultivating them that the, the sort of the, the world forces as it was, as they are, or the, now the internet just carries them away. And I've, the last five or six years, I've come to appreciate a new level of, of what stewardship of those ideas means and how much harder it is that if you want to share ideas in the world, um, it's a lot more work than I've assumed. And so that I, you know, six years ago, I hired a coach for me to take my own medicine and to support me on what does it mean to be a good steward of ideas and share them in the world and um, help others adopt them, help others. Uh, used to, you know, for so long, I assumed my content was a way of attracting new clients, was a way of saying, okay, here's how you can tell whether or not you're the right client for my firm. Mm -hmm. But now I realize that was just bad stewardship, that you know, you share ideas with the world. Um, it's a way of influencing. It's a way of helping change behavior. It's a way of helping people level up. Mm -hmm. right? Same way your podcast isn't just a marketing tool. It's a way of helping your audience grow and change and think about how they show up in the world. Mm -hmm. And so it's taken, the last six years have been a really interesting, hard, uh, season for me to level up my own thought leadership and take responsibility for how I go about doing that. Amazing. What about leading others then? How far back are we? How, where were the foundations oh gosh. of your leadership? We can started? go back uh, many, many decades. <laughs> I, do, I do remember um, in my very first job, uh, which was a, I lived, you basically lived, lived on the road 10 months of the year. And I, I became a leader of a unit of a team. Uh, and that was assigned my own territory to lead when I was 22. So I was really way too young to do that. But, but it, and it was a crucible of leadership. You really had you know, a team of five people or so relying on you to make money and earn a living and grow and develop and have impact with the work we were doing. And I remember, I, and I spent three years in Europe doing that. And I do remember making, waking up one morning and thinking, I need to do this on purpose. I need to be really more, I have this chance now to really shape the lives of, you know, for the next five or six months, people who are looking to me for direction, for hope, for um, development, for coaching. Uh, and I ought to get serious about doing this on purpose. And so that came, and I was very fortunate that came early in my career, in my twenties, um, before I even learned that de like developing leaders was something I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I do think that intentionality, I do think that for me, when I think about the people that I lead in my firm uh, or the, 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 and I don't just mean hierarchically, but I mean laterally too. Mm. Um, I'm, I am really mindful of the fact that you have to really think about the fingerprint you wanna leave on them, about what you want them to remember about their interactions with you uh, over the arc of time. You know, there are days I'm gonna show up not as my best self and, I can ask for their grace when those happens. But when, that, when I don't want that to happen, when I want to show up as my best self, even on hard days, I have to think about that. That, okay, this is going to be a really interesting or difficult or messy or um, energizing or challenging conversation with somebody. When it's over and we part ways, what is it I want them to think? What is it I want to have accomplished in their life and in mine? What is it I want to be true about our relationship when this is through? 
And if, if you don't think about those outcomes on the front end, you may get ones that you really wish you hadn't. Yeah. Awesome. So I um, wanted to talk to you about power. Um, I listened to your or one of your um, TED talks um, and there's so much things we can talk about. And we were joking before we came on about trying to get this all into 20 minutes. Um, but it, it really sort of made me think about people's, some people's perception of leadership might lead them to think about power. And obviously that would be a, a negative connotation of a bad experience of leadership because they've been, the, the power element is that they've been dominated and instructed. And obviously my military background, sometimes people's perception of the military is that power often um, and dictatorship, if you like. Um, could you give us a little bit of your understanding of, uh, of, of power and how that relates to leadership? Well, I think, I think it, you're absolutely right, Stuart, that power is a wildly misunderstood tool of leadership. Uh, and it's not, it's not good or bad, right? I mean, we have multiple sources of power available to us, um, not just the power that comes with our positional power or where we, where, where we place ourselves on the hierarchy, but the relationships we have, the information that we have access to, the opportunities we can create for others to shine, um, all our sources of how we influence others, how we exert our will on others. Um, and it turns out, you know, in our, that your trustworthiness, the ability for people to trust you is very deeply connected to how you influence others, how you choose to use your power. Uh, and if it, it's clear you're serving a greater good, if it's clear that justice is really important to you, that you want to level the playing field for others uh, to have, no matter who they are or how, what they look like, they can have an equal chance of success as anybody else in your organization. Um, if you build bridges to those who are different than you um, versus, you know, thicken your echo chamber to be pe to have people in it only who are like you or think like you. Um, and if you, and if you are who you say you are, if you model what you espouse, if you model the values that the organization purports to be important, turns out, you know, you can increase your trustworthiness by a factor of 16. Mm -hmm. But how you shape the environment around you, how you use your power to do that is a direct, you know, make or break to whether or not people would choose to trust you. You know, if you are a hypocrite, if you say one thing but do another, if you treat people with, without dignity that they deserve, if you're not transparent in how you make decisions, people have to sort of wonder where it is, you're, you're po what orifice you're pulling these choices out of. Um, and if you make rivals of others, if you sort of make others your nemeses, um, you are telling people very clearly about who you trust and therefore who should trust you and who shouldn't. Yeah, amazing. Awesome. Thank you so much. That, that makes it, it really made me think there's a couple of other things that I've been talking about recently about the, the word that and the power is one of those that we have a societal attachment to that word. It's a bit like um, I'm thinking a conflict. A healthy conflict within the leadership team it is good as long as it's delivered right and yep. we, we think conflict or we can't have conflict so so yeah it's, it's just one of those that stood out for me in some of the content you're putting out there it's really important for people to think about that it's a so, it, power is a very beautiful thing i mean what regardless of what form or it takes or what 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 version of it you have available to you we have the opportunity to change the world I mean, be the whole world, but you can change the world around you for somebody else by simply offering them information that they might not have, by connecting them in a relationship to somebody they might not know, to creating an opportunity for them to shine in a way they wouldn't have been able to. Power can be a great thing. We're so used to, I think this is the point you made earlier, we're so used to it being abused. We're so used to it being used for selfish and immoral moral gain but you know in the research that we that you in that ted talk you saw the greatest abuse of power was not for self-interest mm. the, the greatest abuse of power we found in in, in that point 2700 leaders we studied was the abandonment of it mm. people too afraid to use it so they they're so afraid of being misperceived they did nothing at all and they instead curried favor bought popularity wanted to be santa claus and wanted to be liked so much that they didn't use their power at all. Uh, and what a waste for leaders mm -hmm. to have the opportunity to shape another's pathway 
uh, in a very positive way and to choose not to do it. Yeah, so that's awesome. Um, so obviously our audience are um, looking to level up their leadership. Um, we know it's a journey. I don't think it's ever ending. And um, the fact that we've got the social media platforms we have now to speak to great people on podcasts or, or read articles, I was really shone, it shone out bright that you had such an experience um, of speaking to and being in the thick of it with people at lots of different um, levels of organisations. What sort of things have you seen that have worked really well for people to be great leaders and be really successful in that people management space? Well, I think the first thing is uh, I look for when, I, when I'm working with a leader who I'm either going to coach or support in the work of their own change is um, they're, they're, are they being true to themselves? Uh, because the, the first part of being true to yourself is are you being true about yourself? How aware are they of the impact they have on others? When I ask client, if I'm about to go embark on a bunch of interviews, one of the questions I, I love to ask my executives is, so what am I gonna hear? And I get to compare how closely what they believe I'm going to hear with what I actually hear. Um, and uh, if the gap between those things is quite wide, that's that in and of itself is data. So I want to know how, how able are you to self-regulate? How well do you know your own story and, and the warts in it and the challenges it brings to how you influence others? Um, I want to know how open you are to learning, you know, and I want to know how, how much do you care about other people? How empathic are you? How other oriented are you? Um, how do you frame the, the concept of relationship? What, do, you, do you understand that leadership first and foremost, before it's anything else, it's a relationship. Mm -hmm. So those are the basics I look for. So if you're looking to level up your leadership, ask yourself, on what basis do the people you lead trust you? Mm -hmm. And, and, and what you're gonna, what's gonna first come to your mind is um, a bunch of assumptions you've made. Well, I do this, I do this, I think this, I. Great that you think all those things. How do you know the people you lead have metabolized those the way you intend? Have you asked? Have you gotten feedback? Have you calibrated with them? Here's a real simple litmus test. If you don't have somebody coming into your office at least twice a week saying something to you that's uncomfortable to hear, you can be very confident your leadership sucks. Yeah. Because they're telling somebody. And if your assumption is that they're not doing that because there isn't anything difficult to say that things are fine well now you're dumb mm. because if you're running an enterprise if, if there's three people involved in the work you do there's complexity yeah. um so ask yourself where are they taking the hard news if they're not bringing it to me here's what's true at the dinner table at night at home the people you lead are telling stories about you to their family, to their friends, to their loved ones. Do you know what stories they're telling? Mm. And if you don't, if you don't know what stories they're telling, you should want to know. Get in on the conversation. Yeah, that, that's, I love that kind of, I, I was smiling to that because there's a couple of things um, that has happened recently with me talking about the, your blind spot mm. and the, the comical situation. If you talk to somebody about what's their blind spot and they to actually try and answer that question, and that, that, that's obviously not what that's all about. It's like your blind spot is fully blind. Um, but I like that because I always talk about self and situational awareness mm -hmm. and how much part of the, the fluidity of the, the team and the environment are you. And like you said, the, the, those conversations are happening. It's just whether you're involved in that. And I love that because we always talk about creating the environment for communication and feedback, which ultimately has a link to trust. Yeah. Um, I know you've you've already sort of spoken about some of the elements, but obviously this is a big conversation about trust. What are some of the things that people have had success in? And like if they say, yeah, I need to build my trust in my own what do people typically do for starters? Well, the first thing you have to ask yourself is on, on what basis are you trying to earn it? Trust is a currency, it's an economy. Right? For some people, we extend or withhold it based on competence. For some, we extend or withhold it based on character or moral or integrity issues. For some, it's personality. For some, it's consistency, to use your word. So if you don't know what currency you're trading in, you're going you're gonna to default to earning trust based on how you extend it. 
which may or may not be at all the currency that people you're trying to earn it from care about. So the first question I would ask yourself is, can people decode me? If, if somebody followed me around with a video camera all day long and played that video, what would people say were my values from watching it? Or if people know that my values are integrity, um, collaboration, uh, compassion, um, efficiency, productivity, whatever it was. If people followed you around with that same videotape, could they use that videotape as a training program to teach those values? Or would people roll their eyes? Mm -hmm. So ask, just simply go ask people, hey, what is it you think I stand for? Amazing. If you had to go home and write down five words that you believe would be the billboard of my life, what, would you, what words would you write down? Yeah. Just simply ask people. To, they're, they're a mirror. They're watching you. They have a front row seat to your life and your story. Do you know what, what, how they're interpreting it? The second thing is, um, when's the last, think about um, how often do you look for ways to help other people shine versus how often do you look for ways to help yourself shine? Um, if you're not actively creating a place for others to use their voice, to find their voice, to leave their own mark on the world, then ask yourself how you're spending your time. Um, if, you're, if you lead a very hub and spoke team where all the spokes and it's all central to all, all decision pathways, all content, all ideas lead to you, then you're in a very dangerous place because that's not sustainable. And in a crisis that we will fall apart because folks will pull away. Yeah, and so ask yourself um, this week, who went home from my team feeling better about themselves feeling more confident in themselves, feeling proud of something they did because of an opportunity I helped create. Amazing. Good. I like tangible things that our audience can go and impl implement. That's awesome. So, <coughs> Ron, that's 20 minutes. Um, thank you so much for imparting um, some of what you do and what you've seen over your time and um, delivering what you do. And um, we're going to put all the links to your, um, your book, your TED Talks in the comments below so people can go and check you out. Um, and, and get you. I know you've got a book out this year, haven't you? The um, is it to to be honest? Is that yep, the, to be honest? The, yeah. So we'll, we'll put that in there for people to go and check you out as well. So, ladies and gents, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed that. Please let us know your takeaways from this episode specifically. I always love to hear your feedback, and everybody's takeaway is slightly different and how they interpret it. So it's amazing to hear. So keep that coming in. Um, make sure you hit subscribe on the YouTube channel. Make sure you hit follow on your podcast provider. Remember, every Wednesday at 6 a.m., my aim is to bring some amazing people to your um, day. Ron, thank you so much for your time. Stuart, a pleasure. Thanks for having me. We'll see you all next week, guys. Take care. Bye.